Okay. Hey folks, happy Friday. Um, we are here live with Comics Workshop, fall season um, or late summer season. I'm Merrick Bennett and uh, let's get started. So I have here a pencil and some inking tools and my standard little pink eraser. It's getting smaller as I use it. And we're gonna pencil a picture from the very beginning today. Um, so I'll call up my desktop camera here. Once again, this is uh, merrickbennett.com. That's my website. And if you want to become a patron over at patreon.com, you can sign up there and get all the updates and invites. All right. I have been, um, I don't know about you, but I've been thinking about a lot of spaceships and not drawing nearly enough. And last Friday, we drew some spaceships and stuff like that and exploding clouds and things. So I thought today, maybe we'd do something a little more peaceful with spaceships. So um, I have a little idea. We'll see how far this goes. But if you can, uh, you can follow along or draw your own version on any size piece of paper, any kind of paper will do. This is my 11 by 17 cardstock. That's my favorite kind of paper. It's nice and nice and thick um, for summertime weather. And I just have a standard pencil with a little eraser tip. And you can follow along, and you can copy or make changes as you see fit. So. Um, first thing I'm going to do, oh, I'm going to set up my page, of course, before I forget. So I'll give myself a margin around the edge. And I do that very lightly in pencil because it's probably a line I'm going to erase later unless I draw a border around my picture. But this is just my reminder not to go any closer to the edge than that, right? So all around, all four sides of my picture. Um, and I'm thinking I may use this page in a book of upcoming space adventure comics. So, you know, it might fit in as a, a, a spacer page. So I, I want to watch out for the edges of the page and not draw important stuff at the very edge. Um, so next I'm going to give myself, I want to have a planet across the bottom here. So I think what I'll do is I'll give myself a curving line and my arm, I notice, as I, as I move my arm, it kind of makes a curve there. So I can kind of use that. That looks kind of round. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's lean into the lopsidedness. We'll make it a little crooked and wavy. This can be a curving like an asteroid, not a perfectly round planet, but a lumpy asteroid. And then we're going to have a, a spaceship on this side of it. That's my plan, at least because I'm thinking just in case this becomes a two page spread in my book, I don't wanna have the spaceship right in the center. I've learned my lesson there because the center of the book gets eaten a little bit when the book folds up. So let's, let's mark off about the center. Let's see if we can fold this, mark our center line right around there. I'll just put a light warning line right there. And just in case this becomes a two-page spread, there's another margin there. So I have two safety zones in this two-page spread, potentially. So I'm thinking I want to try something kind of fun here. Um, I'm going to do a big round spaceship. It's going to be perched on this asteroid. Um, and then looking out into space here. So we'll have sort of an open night sky and we'll fill it with stars or other asteroids or other planets or something. And uh, let's see. I'm thinking this will be kind of an exploratory craft, so it'll be kind of round. I'll just kind of give myself sort of a, a blobby round shape. This isn't like a, a, fat, a high speed um, racer craft or anything like that. It's just sort of a round, rolling around the universe, exploring kind of craft. All right, and it kind of echoes. We have the blobby, lumpy asteroid beneath us. We have the craft and you're saying, wait a minute, it's not resting on the asteroid, right? Well, I'm thinking what I'll do is um, I'm going to give it some legs. So it's going to be like standing up a bit. This is the kind of spacecraft that comes down, doesn't plop down onto the asteroid. It stands above it and it puts out these legs and lands there. Um, hey, Ryan, how's it going? <laughs> Hi, Merrick, what you're working on today, says Ryan. Ryan, I am penciling a asteroid an asteroid with an exploratory spacecraft on it. And here we go. So let's give it legs. Let's make it sort of like, um, not straight legs, but kind of squatting legs, like, like, uh, like a spider or something. And you can give it as many legs as you want. I'm gonna make the legs come down like this, kind of a curve, a point, and a curve back to the shape. Maybe I'll try that over here too. There's two legs, curve them down. They don't have to look exactly alike, you know? Maybe these legs are kind of flexible or different shaped, 
different sized. This leg's gonna go over here. Maybe I'll bring this leg up. Let's give it sort of a round inside where it joins onto the craft like that. Maybe since the bottom of the craft is kind of curving down like this, maybe it'll kind of be a little curved down too. There we go. And we can kind of, this is, it's gonna be like a, I'm thinking it's like a, a mechanical metal craft, but we can kind of flex the shapes a little bit. Let's go easy on ourselves. I'm not using a ruler. I'm not using compasses or anything like that. Let's give it another leg. This leg's gonna curve behind that one. And maybe another leg over here. Now you see how I can tuck this leg around behind and maybe, oh, that, let's do that with this leg. This leg will come down and go behind the edge of the asteroid. That's kind of cool. Let's bring this leg out and tuck it behind. And now I can't see it. See, my legs get tangled. I'm gonna just move this leg entirely. I just got an idea. I wanna change it up. This is why I pencil, folks. This is why I always start with my pencils. Now I know what I wanna do, but I had to try a bunch of different things first. Now, if we leave it like this, our craft is gonna fall over. So I'm gonna tuck a leg. Here's my lumpy asteroid. I'm gonna bring a curving leg and tuck it behind. So it sort of looks like it's grabbing on. Like here's the asteroid, one leg comes in front, one leg goes behind and it's kind of grabbing onto that curved surface. And then now I'm gonna bring this leg down so it doesn't interfere with seeing that leg. I want my reader to see it clearly. So I'll bring this leg down about to the level of here, of this leg. There we go. That looks a little better. So I had to plan that out, you know? I had to draw a bunch of extra legs and erase them, but that's why I'm penciling first. And you know what? I won't even erase these lines. I, I will fix that when I come into ink. Remember our process here. We're gonna have pencils first. We'll get all our details or most of our details in pencil. Only when we're ready will we come in with our inking tools, our pen and our marker or any other inking tool you're using and we'll put some ink on it and then we'll erase the pencil lines and that'll leave a nice clear black and white image for people to read. Okay, that's looking a little, little bit more like a five-legged spider exploratory craft um, exploring this asteroid. I like it. All right. So now let's see, let's give it like a, a nose cone on the top because I'm thinking this thing like blasts off. Maybe we'll give it some, some rockets underneath. So let's give it some sort of flattened circles pointing out in all directions here. And then we'll give them cones on top. It's just got a bunch of little blaster engines under there. That looks kind of cool. A nose cone on top, it looks like a party hat. Let's give it like a, an antenna. And how about like a couple antennas going off to the side here? Like there's one, maybe a different shaped one here. We'll give it sort of a flattened dish and another little antenna there. Let's give it a couple little antennas. There's also like the curved dish with the spike antenna there. We've got like little blister pods on the side. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can add in here. Now, once we start adding those details, this is gonna start looking really plain down here. So we'll wanna add some details. Let's add the big details first. So I'm thinking maybe there's like on the side, there's like this round window there. And let's do another one here. Well, that's cool. It looks like eyes sort of. This one will be rounder. And this one, how about this one? Let's do a door on this side. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of curve up and around, right? And then since this, this, it goes in here, I'm gonna give it an edge on that side. And that looks like a, a really cartoony door, but that's all right. I, this, is, this can be sort of a cartoony spacecraft. Let's give it like a crown across the top. And um, what else could we do? Maybe like a couple skylight windows up here. We'll do like some round bumps here. That looks kind of cool. And maybe like a couple asymmetrical pieces coming down. Like let's do some joints here, curving down, showing us the curve of the craft. Let's do like 
some um, sort of cartoony window frames around here. We can do, I like to do this sort of thing. You double that circle and you do little bolts every so often around that frame. I kind of like those spaceships like you see in the old 1920s Buck Rogers spaceships where they look like they could be boats or something, right? Pre-spacecraft spaceships in comics. I kind of like those looks. In fact, let's make it even clunkier. Let's give it like, um, like a plug, some kind of, we'll, we'll do like a cord coming down and plugging in over here. And then we'll double that line and we'll put a guide on here to hold it in place and we'll bring it down. And then just to make sure people see that, we'll, we'll put lines all along that. And it's like a, a cable or a hose connecting one part of the outside of the craft to another as if, as if it needs to like circulate something or somebody jury rigged a little hose on there. Let's do that again with this side. We'll put a circle there. Let's bring it up away from the craft a little bit. We'll bring it up, double that line, tuck it in behind there, and we'll put another cable set of lines on there. That's cool. That looks like somebody like reached around and plugged something in. Let's put a little box over here. We can do, let's put a couple boxes in and then some connectors that go between them and one that comes over here and plugs into another box and maybe some open the door buttons there. And maybe like a little panel. How about like a visor panel over the door? We'll erase that line, just tucking it over the door a little bit. Let's do some lines here. I'm just kind of making it up now. We have another window on this side, I think. Doesn't it look like we need another window to balance that one? That's looking like a cool exploratory craft. Let's tuck a astronaut in here. I'm gonna give it a round head. I think it's human, but we won't really see the face. We'll give it a body, just a little. This is these, I like drawing astronauts because their suits can be so bulky, you can't really see where their elbows and knees are. So you can just kind of use the lines. We'll give them cartoon hands. And just like the cables, we'll put those lines along that arm. Here's somebody reaching out, about to step out that door. And what's coming out that door? I, I think the bottom of the door is like down here, hid behind this leg. But then I think there's something that comes out. Maybe there's like a staircase that comes out like this and lands right there. Look at that. And you can't really see it going into the door, but it comes out between those claws there. Um, oh, it's a ramp. It's like a, a wheelchair accessible ramp, just in case the astronauts need that for their probe or for their craft or for their wheelchairs, maybe. There we go. And it's retractable. I think it folds up into the under the body of the ship. There. That's cool. Maybe a couple more boxy things. Oh, one of my favorite boxy things to put on. We'll put two rectangles and then we'll draw lines across them. And those look like vents, don't they? Maybe two buttons or bolts right above them. And then let's put, let's put in this window put sort of a, uh, a frame on the inside too, and a frame on the inside of this window too, just like the door, right? The door on this side, I can see that side of the door frame. Go look at a door sometime, look at it from different angles, right? I'll put the side on there, the side a little wider here, and here we're just seeing the, the dome of the window. But let's put like a control dashboard in there. We'll just kind of put a little, rectangle and then you can kind of go crazy and put all sorts of um, levers and I like these analog controls here, joysticks and all sorts of stuff and maybe like a, a panel with buttons on it. And that's like the control dashboard for this spaceship. We'll put another one here and maybe like a, a microphone on a stand. There we go. That's kind of cool because we went from a really simple, just a big circle, and we added a couple more circles and squares. And little by little, we can kind of add these little details that make it look really like you could walk in and start pulling, pushing buttons and pulling levers and stuff. Um, so let's see. This is starting to look more realistic. Let's devote a little attention to what it's standing on. So what do we want? Craters, rocks? We said it's going to be kind of lumpy, so it's not like a perfectly round, huge planet. 
It's kind of bumpy and lumpy. So maybe that gives us, maybe we'll put a couple more bumps. Now remember the bumps are gonna be bigger as they come towards us here. And maybe we do have some rocks, maybe like some, we can just do like a round rock with a flat bottom, like something sticking up out of the space dust. And then they'll get a little smaller as they go further away. And there'll be more of them because you see a wider field of vision, right? So they're big up close. And also I'm kind of curving the bottom. See, there's like, I'm, I wanna follow the line of this asteroid. It, it's got a round shape here, right? So any place I draw a rock here, I'm gonna follow that line with the bottom of the rock sticking out. So that makes it look like you're, you're almost falling off the edge here. Put a couple in between. Maybe in the distance, there's like some big rocks. Maybe where this leg comes down, maybe that point is kind of buried in the dust and the dirt. Maybe it stirred up some dust and dirt. Maybe when it landed, it kind of splatted into the, into the soil there. This one too, I think. Right? Doesn't, doesn't it seem like it would a craft that big would sink in a little? Maybe there's like cracks coming off. And then probably we're going to want to like shade in underneath here, right? Because that'll make it look a little heavier. Like there's, there's a drop shadow under that craft. Coming right out to the leg. Coming right out to the leg. Right under that ramp, right? Ah, that's looking kind of cool. I think there's one more thing we could do here. We could, let's put a little grabber claw in here. So let's see. I'm gonna put a, a port right there, make it a ring. And then coming out of that port, we'll put one of those cables, but this is a moving one. So it's gonna wind through this scape, maybe pass behind that rock. And it's seeking out a specific kind of rock that this craft is looking for or that it needs. And we'll bring it right up to maybe this rock right here. You think it's that rock? Let's give it a claw. And it's reaching for that rock. Give it hinges on here. We'll give it some mechanical parts. And then we'll just go right along there. See how I'm curving those lines to make that look like a cable or a, a prehensile Dr. Octopus style tentacle arm. And it goes right up into that port. That looks kind of cool. It looks like this craft has come down and landed on our asteroid. <laughs> and, uh, and it's turned off its engines and it's put down its landing claws. And then this arm started wandering around looking for the rock, the one rock that it needs. Maybe uh, that makes it look, look like an oatmeal cookie or something. But I'll make that rock a little different because that's a special rock. All right, our faceless astronaut is, you know, I think this astronaut is not the first person or creature to land on this asteroid. I think if we come down here, I think there's gonna be another one. Maybe, maybe these are footprints right here. Stepped over that rock. And now we'll do, how about, let's do another astronaut right here. Maybe they're a little closer to us. So we'll make those footprints get bigger. What could they be doing down there? Let's bring them up. So I don't want them. I don't want them at the edge. I want them sort of in this picture. Maybe they go over here then to the edge of the asteroid, and then we'll put them in this picture. Maybe they're looking up at the sky. You notice I'm having them stand not straight up like this, the way the craft is, but they are standing perpendicular to the where whatever the. Uh, surface of the asteroid is. I think they're responding to some kind of gravity on this tiny little asteroid. So let's see, like I said, oh, I know what they're doing. We'll give them a body. Maybe that's their belt. Maybe this is their helmet. They look a little bigger than that one, but that's all right. Maybe these are their legs. Yeah, that's gonna make them look huge. Doesn't, don't they look huge standing on the, Standing on the horizon there. All right, we'll go back. We'll try that again. Like I said, I pencil because it takes a few tries. Let's take this astronaut and we'll keep them about the same distance. We'll make them about the same size. So we'll give them their head. 
their body, their legs. Remember, these are bulky suits, so I can be, I can be kind of approximate. I don't have to draw a perfect person. Big arms coming up. Maybe they're holding, oh, I know what they're holding. They're holding like a box and a special antenna and a big scanner antenna. So we'll do sort of a, a, a flat shape with an antenna sticking out and all sorts of little doodads on there. And they are, maybe they're scanning for something. There we go. And this has like, these have like old TV antennas on them. We'll give it sort of wires. We'll give it a, like a solar panel on there. That's quite a device they're using. And maybe that device, let's give it a plug. It's got a cord that runs back into the spacecraft. That's what connects them. What do you think? Is that so big it needs to be on legs too? Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? That looks a little better. So they are setting up an antenna. They must be sending a signal. Where could they be sending a signal to? Maybe there's like a planet up here somewhere. Maybe there's a planet up here. And they're trying to get a signal to that planet. Let's put a ring around it, nice wide ring. Sort of rough it out with my pencil till it looks about right on a distant planet there. And then when I ink this, I think what I'll do to ink it is like I usually do, I'll just dot in black dots for all the stars, right? And then um, when I scan it in, I can just invert, I can select the whole sky and invert that sky and get a nice deep black sky without having to color it in painstakingly with a marker or with a brush and ink. So that enables me to um, actually just focus now on inking it because I think we have, I think we want a pretty empty sky up here. So I think we're about ready to start inking it. Let's look at these claws again. I think these claws need like some segments because they look kind of big and smooth to me. So maybe that last segment will have lines along it like that. We'll come in here and do the same with this claw, kind of curving those segments down. I'm curving it along to, to fit with the side here. Maybe we can double those entry points. I don't know, somehow these are, these are kind of semi-flexible claws because it needs to be able to come down and grab the asteroid. Maybe this thing can even walk along instead of flying. Maybe it kind of crawls along like a spider or something. This is kind of fun. You can kind of discover these things as you, as you draw them. Maybe there's like special sensors on here, on this joint out here. or flexibility, we'll put that on each of the penultimate joints here. Okay, and then this one we can't really see much of. Yeah, I like these five-legged explorer crafts. All right, so let's try some inking. And then if we think of something we wanna put in here, you know, we have a lot of space. There could be another spacecraft coming in. There could be all sorts of stuff happening. So let's think about that. I am going to start inking. I think, I think I'll think i rough it out with my marker. I really like to rough out heavy black lines just to show where my shapes are. So one thing I'll do is I'll zip over and I'm, gonna, I'm going to, um, click a quick picture, because this is the last time you'll see those pencil lines. I'm gonna adjust my focus a little bit just to make it more clear. Oh, I like how this looks in pencil. I'll click a picture of that. Okay. I really like how this looks in pencil, um, but you know, if I tried to photocopy it or put it in a book and share it without doing the inking, uh, you just wouldn't be able to see it. You, it wouldn't. It wouldn't look very clear. All right. So I'm coming in with my my inking pen, which is a water-based marker. You can get uh, much better, more fancy artistic markers with pigment-based ink, but they cost a pretty penny. So 
I tend to use really cheap ingredients that I can find everywhere. So I'm definitely doing the asteroid outline in ink. And then I think I'll do the outer edges of the whole spacecraft. And that means definitely these claws. Whoops, I came away from the line there. Uh-oh, gonna make some changes as we go. Gonna make sure I can see where I'm drawing. I wanted that line to be a little more curved. Let me darken it and I'll figure out a way to fix that. Um, you know, let's, I wonder if I could add a couple more antennas here. Maybe like a little rocket ship antenna. And maybe like, a, a, oh, one of those, you know those, what are those called? Those little things that catch the wind and spin? But maybe this is like a solar wind spinner. With six cups, six discs. There we go. That's kind of cool. And maybe one more antenna here with spikes to read something different. And then maybe one more cable. How about like right here, there's a cable that comes out and goes down here. Because once I, I wanna get the, uh, the outline of the craft about how it's gonna look so I can ink those. I think that adds a nice, some kind of boxy thing here. That adds a nice thrown together or carefully built asymmetrical look to it. All right, now we can do the outlines here. I think I'll do those antennas with my thin line marker. Since they're so fine, I'll get the biggest parts of the spacecraft with my thick line marker. Wow, that really brings it out, doesn't it? Whenever you put ink on something, it's like saying, here it is, look at this. Here's the main shape and then we'll add those details. Makes it much more three-dimensional. I think those hoses will also be with the thin line marker on oh, this one. We can do it like this. Of course, if these are outlined against a black night sky, it won't make that much of a difference. Ah, uh, this leg tucks behind that ramp, that access ramp. There we go. I'll do that cable with a thin line marker. Oh, that's looking really striking already. I think I'll come in with a fine point of my chisel tip and just get the basics of this character here. Oh, they need a backpack. We can just add that on there. And they're so small, I can be kind of imprecise with their shape. Like I don't have to get their elbows and knees exactly right. I can kind of let them be a little blobby. That may be, oh, let's do the claw too. So this comes out and this can get a little thicker as it comes towards us. We'll shade under it. There's the claw. There's the claw. I think we'll do the rocks all with thin lines and that'll make the spaceship sort of pop out a little more. I like how those, how those antennas look. I'm not sure how they're gonna look against an all black night sky. They might disappear a little. And if they do that, I will, um, I will go in and I'll do like a white halo around the whole craft if I need to. And Ryan's watching here. Oh, the Bob Ross of comics. Yeah, it's a happy little planet. It's a happy little asteroid. That's great. Thank you, Ryan. Make your, make your exploratory asteroid crawlers happy little exploratory asteroid crawlers. I know I, I've been going into my old, um, my old college days sci-fi strips. That's why I'm thinking of spaceships so much because I'm looking at all these spaceships I drew 20, 25 years ago 
And I was really into spaceships then, but all my spaceships are like exploding, blasting, fighting spaceships. And uh, so to my 45 year old self, it's a little bit like, hey, come on, aren't there like cool scientific spaceships you could draw to? <laughs> So maybe I maybe as I do all my old exploding blasting fighting spaceships I'm I have to do some art to just kind of balance that off and show the other part of that universe where there are some cool scientific exploratory spaceships. I don't think this spacecraft I think it aims to uh have a small footprint on on the asteroids. I think that's why it has these legs. It doesn't want to like plunk down and damage the asteroid. It wants to stay up as much as possible to preserve the asteroid for scientific study. And I think this is not like an extractive claw to get gold nuggets out of the asteroid. I think that's the kind of claw that picks up samples, studies them maybe in the little lab here and then can put them back exactly where it found it or something like that. Or maybe it just like claws onto the samples and can study them without moving them. That would be kind of cool. I have faith that these astronaut characters here have worked this out and they know what they're doing and they're going to be respectful of the environment of this asteroid that they're plopping down into. I have faith in that because I know if they don't, something might happen to them. Okay, I'm doing this cable with the thin lines, thin lines. I like how the repeated, the line on that cable helps you sort of see that it's curling along. If there weren't those thin lines, your eye would lose the lines a little bit. And we can also sort of, oh, we'll probably do a little bit of shading on the underside of this happy little exploratory asteroid crawler. I like this. I didn't, I said I had an idea when we started. I was like, I'm gonna draw a spaceship that's round. And then as we draw this, it turns out it's an asteroid crawler looking for certain types of specimens to study the, I don't know, to study the, the uh, geology of the asteroid or something, right? You kind of discover that and, and you need to just give yourself, I need to just give myself a little space to think it through as I draw. And I like to discover it as I draw too. Like if I set out with a plan, and I stick to that plan, I might miss the chance to discover something. So let's see what we discover. We still have to discover what's in this space out here and we may discover it's just empty space. Maybe setting up the antenna with empty space above it, maybe even no planets, maybe that's the way to go. Maybe this is a picture of emptiness. Like maybe these people are lost. And they're running out of supplies or they somehow entered into a wormhole and when they came back, all their maps weren't quite right. I'm gonna add a little plate here. I think some of these claws are different from others. I like things that are asymmetrical as you can tell. Maybe they patched up part of them, right? You can always come in here and put some bolts around an edge, show where they patched something on. Here's our distant claw background. I think this will be black right in there, unless I have sort of a halo of white around the asteroid. Maybe it has a thin, thin atmosphere. If anybody has any questions or suggestions, I'm open to suggestions. This is, remember, we're making this up as we go. It's our Friday live draw. It's kind of cool to just see where we end up after 30 or 40 minutes of drawing. What's it been? Oh, it's been 30 already. So let's get this inked though, before we call it quits for the night. I tend to, when I do these Friday live draws with you, it's I get going on this and then I don't want to stop. Like after the live draw, I'm like, all right, I'm going to scan that in. I'm going to process it. So who knows? I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do a little video to show what happens when we scan this in and, and do, the, uh, do the night sky.
And remember, we're going to come in. Maybe I can even start in a little section. I'm going to come in and just random dot. Oh, that's a little hard to see there with the light. I'm going to come in here. Let me lock that light with a card so it doesn't have the glare. There we go. Uh, MerrickBennett.com, Patreon.com slash MerrickBennett if you want to join up. It's how to find more of these and get the invites, get stuff in the mail through the Patreon. And I just set up a Discord server for the Patreon too for patrons to hang out and we'll do, um, I'm going to post more background images and maybe some sketch page doodles and stuff. Like I have the, uh, I did a little quick doodle. I'll show you before we started, I, I took my composition book out and I doodled out some ideas, but you can see it's already changed a lot, our final picture. So this is, I want to just make sure I have an idea I can work on for a little while with you. So I test it out in my comp book. But then once we get drawing, I like to be open to change. Oh, wait, we were doing some stars. You know what I usually do to do the night sky is I'll usually come in with my marker and I'll do some a couple big stars and planets. Just evenly spaced but clumped also, which is a tricky thing to do. Because I find if I evenly space them, it looks to my eye like somebody intentionally put them there, which somebody did. But you want it to look like poof, they were just grains of sand scattered across the cosmos. So like these look a little evenly spaced, so I'll put three together there and one way up there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Actually, the, I mean, most stars they say are um, two star systems. So it's kind of cool to put not that, you, not that they're the same size or anything, but to always clump a couple stars together. Of course, two stars that look like they're together might be light years apart, right? So I do these big stars first and out in the margins too, even though that'll probably get cut off. I wanna make sure there's some night sky out there. I'll do those big stars first, then I'll come back in and do all the little stars scattered around them maybe clumped around some of the bigger stars as if there's like clusters, different systems, maybe a uh, shooting star or a comet. You can hide all sorts of cool things out in the night sky. I'll make a tiny little comet here with a little tail. Most people won't even notice it, but it's hidden out there for anyone who goes looking. You can spell out your name in dots and then hide it with other dots, whatever kind of secrets you want to work into your night sky. Remember, once I scan this, I'm going to select the whole sky and invert the colors of just the sky. So all these black dots will become white. All the white space will become black, right? Ah, Bobby's on. You said your your first space scenes borrowed characters from Muppets, Pigs in Space. Now I know it was kind of fanfic. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna I'll have to come back on with some of my old um, sketchbooks. First of all, I'm I'm glad <laughs> Zane is full of original ideas. Zane, keep on drawing. That's great. I would love to see your spaceships if you're drawing spaceships. You know, Bobby, when you say that, I realize this ship might be uh, partly based on the Pigs in Space ship, wasn't it? Kind of round. I wouldn't be surprised if I am carrying around all sorts of pigs in space references in all my spaceships, because that was like, boy, that rocked my world. That was a formative influence. Um, I think the absolute best pigs in space episode, of course, it goes without saying, was the uh, the one with Mark Hamill and uh, Chewbacca and C-3PO and the gang. Um, and uh, Gonzo was Lord Vader, right? Or I forget what he was called. But that was, boy, I just, I watched the Muppets just hoping they would rerun that Star Wars episode when they blast through the uh, dressing room wall and all that stuff. So yeah, thank you. I had totally forgotten about that, but I am probably in all my spaceships just ripping off pigs in space over and over again in some way or other.
think some guiding fins on this nose cone, definitely. Makes it look kind of fun. Maybe some bolts. Oh my goodness, why didn't I think of that? Of course, we have this amazing, see, we're here in the, in the future. <laughs> We're here in the future, and uh, Bobby's saying, I'm, I'm going to YouTube it later. Yep. Of course, that doesn't occur to me because I'm still living in some ways way in the distant past where the Muppets were on weeknights, and I think two episodes on Sunday nights, um, if I remember correctly, when I was a kid. But here we are in the distant dystopic future, when strangely we can just look up whichever episode of the Muppets we want and somebody's gonna have posted it. I mean, could you have imagined that 40 years ago? Unbelievable. Good point. All right. We've got the little rocket ship. Maybe this is a defensive rocket or a flare or something they can launch from that arm. You don't want to launch it close to the ship because it'll it'll set off all the sensors and um, disturb the scientific apparatus, of course. So, so it has to be out on a little arm there. Let's see, we've got the hoses here. Yeah, if you're drawing spaceships too, I would love to see them. Yes, Miss Piggy was Leia. <laughs> Great. Well, let's post a link in the comments here once we've tracked that down. And we'll see how much I would be interested to know. I'll get out my, uh, I started to say before I got excited about Muppets, I'll get out some of my, um, my old, old sketchbooks from 40 years ago when I was a couple of years old. And I was doodling spaceships then. And I did, it was all fanfic. It was like, uh, it was Star Wars characters and then like Batman mixed in with Star Wars because I always thought it would be better that way. If they had, I mean, the Muppets always had guest stars. So why not have like Batman in the next Star Wars movie or something like that, right? Maybe it would have been better. And I did that in my sketchbooks, of course, because I just, I didn't even think of it as, like drawing comics, I just thought of it as like making movies. So there's all sorts of, I liked, I have a sketchbook here. I think I showed it on one video, but I'll get it out again. Um, in another video, it had like, it mixes superheroes with uh, Star Wars, with um, like Moby Dick whale hunting with, uh, World War II planes, all the stuff I was into when I was five or six years old. Monsters and spaceships. Strangely enough, it's all this stuff I draw like on a Friday afternoon when I'm tired out from working on various things, various fun projects, and I just want to kind of zone out and make something up and have fun with it, not worry about researching it other than looking up old Muppets clips. So I'm noticing the underside of this curved ship needs to have like some, some shadows just to make it look like it's going down a little bit. So test that out with my pencil. I'll add them like the five o'clock shadow on the ship. See that? Darkens it a little bit and maybe a little bit of that under the arm here just where there's like a, a horizontal underside to that arm. It's looking cool. Okay, this is looking good. Wow, but so much is still to be inked. Let's see, let's put this cable, let's put a little curl in this cable. I kind of like that when these scientific devices get a little mussed up. We'll put a little loop in there. Oh, that looks cool. Let's do another loop the other way. This one got really a little tangled here on the way to the antenna. Probably this antenna is really sensitive and can't be used in the ship because the, uh, the ship controls interfere with it. Let's put another control panel in this blank spot. Just like straight lines and circles, buttons and sliders. 
probably this had to be used far away from the ship because it's so sensitive. Ooh, we'll do some funky shapes on here. I don't know what that antenna does. We here in the 21st century couldn't understand what these devices do. I like these things that are like a mixture though, like I said, of 1920s boat technology and advanced stuff that we couldn't even imagine. I mean, that's, that's like what we have now, you tell me. Oh, you can use Google to look up any Muppet show you want. But yeah, it's kind of through this typewriter interface. <laughs> I guess now there's voice rec recognition, but it's still a little clunky. I don't know what's out on the end of this thing. That's quite an antenna there. All right. There's like an on button and an off button too. <laughs> Very simple controls. All right. Helmet, backpack, tube from helmet to backpack. Let's give the arms, just like those hoses, those sort of contour lines that show the shape of the arm. I think the feet, are, the feet of this astronaut are lost in the space dust. Then we don't have to draw them. Nice. Same with these little feet of the antennas. Lost in the space dust. And we'll shade in underneath it a little bit, just like we will under the spacecraft. That's looking good. Let's finish this ramp. Wow, it's so cool to, to see it on screen. It's a way to step back. I, I'm a big fan of like stepping back from your work, looking at it from a distance, seeing how it's uh, coming out, maybe from an angle, maybe maybe looking at it upside down, right? You'll see different things like, oh yeah, it's cool. It's kind of leaning a little bit to correct itself on the page. I didn't even notice that before. Um, it's good to look at it from other angles. I'm a big fan of flipping it over and holding it up to the light and looking at it. You can't really see it here, but looking at it with the light shining through it. And that's, I think, more how it looks to other people, like totally different from this, which is how I imagined it, or how I'm imagining it as we draw it. But if you flip it around and hold it up to the light, you kind of see it anew, the mirror image effect. Oh, I have to do the rocks. We have to decide, are these rocks thick lines or thin lines? I'm thinking, These look like sparkles now. I'm thinking thin lines because I can always thicken them up, but it's awfully hard to make them thinner if we start with the thick lines. This looks like a desk lamp now. All right, let's do the controls in here, the scientific apparatus. Levers and joysticks, old fashioned analog stuff. That's more fun to draw. Mm-hmm, all right, oops, missed this claw. Get these patterns in the claws. Maybe a little patch there. Maybe a little patch there. All right. Let's do thin line rocks. This is a little messier, a little quicker to do. I'll kind of rough in some rocks here. And then we were going to do some shadows underneath this. Let's do the rocks first. I do a lot of little tiny black lines. And when you step back from it, it just looks kind of grayish. And that's what I want, just a darker gray 
underneath this thing. Gives it a little more weight as it hovers, as it, as it crouches over the surface of the asteroid. That'll help your eyes see that it's, it's set up above the asteroid a little bit. I think we might need some thick lines on these rocks, especially these foreground rocks. That's what we need, yeah. A thick line kind of brings it out. Yep, you gotta try different things, right? Inking is experimenting too. You come up with things that work, then you have to try things in each setting, come up with something that works for each individual setting of the drawing, of whatever drawing you're working on. If you always just do the same thing every time, then you're not pushing yourself. You gotta push yourself a little bit to discover new things. That's what I find. It's like pigs in space. You gotta go where no pig has ever gone before. Let's put some shading under this hose claw thing. Oh, and where it lifts up a little bit. There it goes, that helps it stand out. If I were taking the time to really do this, I might do light, light lines all over the dust of this asteroid just to make it look a little more textured and messy maybe darker around these close-up rocks, right? Because they're a little more shaded. The stuff that comes closer to you is a little darker than the stuff that's farther away. Usually, often, sometimes. But I'm not going to take a lot of time to do that because that's not the focus of this picture. I'm going to wait. And I, I can always do that later if there's more time. I'm going to finish up here. I'm thinking this is a night sky above them. Maybe, maybe, maybe with our stars, we can get like an asteroid. Uh, sorry, not an asteroid. This is the asteroid here. We can get like a galaxy and we'll do like a spiral, 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 spiral. Happy little galaxies. But it's huge and it's faint because it's, there's like, dust clouds around it or something. So when I do my stars, that's gonna come out. I'll do darker stars around those lines, more stars, and then I'll invert it and it'll be lighter. That means then, yeah, that'll work. That'll have a nice tilt to it. So the asteroid kind of has a tilt this way and the galaxy has a tilt this way. And you start to feel like, maybe I could put it in the book upside down just to emphasize like, we're all just crawling around on the surface of these floating bodies, falling, tumbling through space, you know? We'll see how we use this. Let's go in with our thin lines here. We'll just do a single, beautiful, sort of round, whoops, sort of round orb with light, light, light line rings going around it. Maybe just a single, flat disc ring, connect all those lines. That'll be good for that one. Bigger planet floating right in front of the galaxy there. And then let's give the, uh, the heart of the galaxy a whole lot of stars. Maybe it's like almost a shining city of light there. And then we'll do like guide stars out through these arms. And I'll just connect all those arms with tiny little stars. It'll be pretty faint. Or maybe just a suggestion, you know? I don't wanna take the time to do billions and billions of stars here. We'll see if, if it doesn't come out, you know, I can replace it with, I can like copy and paste sections of night sky from elsewhere. If I don't like the look of the galaxy made with hundreds of stars, it might just look kind of flat and 
like I didn't take the time to do it, but I kind of like how it looks now. You never really know until you go in and you select this night sky and invert these colors. You never really know how it's gonna look, but it's kind of fun to try to get a sense as you draw of, of drawing something in inverse and then seeing how it comes out when you do invert it. Have you ever tried that? Try drawing a picture, but all the white spaces, draw them in ink, like a woodcut, you know, and then invert it, invert the colors, scan it in and invert it. See how it looks. It's, it's really interesting. It's tricky, kind of fun, surprising. There's my roughed out galaxy. I'll put a few more stars here and there, close to it, far from it, clumped. Maybe it gets darker over here. Only a few stars out over here. A few little clumps. Whenever I see like three in a line, I try to add one outside that line just to make it look a little more random. All right. There we go. Well, I'll finish this up. I'm not going to take another hour to add these stars in here. Right? You get the idea. I'll finish this up. I'll, I'll work on some other stuff when I'm ready to take a break. I'll come in here, do a thousand more stars, maybe like just before I wrap it up for the day when my brain can't make any more decisions. I'll come in and do, okay, I'll do a thousand more stars, dot, 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 dot. Put on an audio book or something. That's a good use for this time because I'm not making a lot of key decisions here as I dot these in. And you know, if, if the deadline came and I had to wrap this up suddenly, I could just be done at this point. I've got the basic ideas down for the picture. Maybe a few more sort of speedy shade lines, making this asteroid a little more gray, a little more rough. It's like it's fading into, that's the shaded side of the asteroid there. I'm not gonna overthink the light sources and stuff here. I'm just trying to make a clear picture. Here are our little footprints. We tried a couple different ways of doing the footprints. Finally ended up just scribbling them onto the surface of the asteroid. All right, it's looking good. I gotta make sure my textures go down into the margins here because remember this margin tells us about where it's gonna get trimmed if it becomes a, a page in the book or a poster. So I'm going to draw past that so it won't look like the artwork ends. The artwork can go as a full bleed off the edge of the page. Shade in under here. Put a couple beep boop sort of controls on this backpack here. Couple more buttons on this antenna. I think we're in good shape. Now remember our last, our last trick, now that we penciled, inked, our last trick is to come in and erase. I'll just show you what that looks like. It looks like this. I'll take my eraser, make sure my ink is dried and it's not smudging on the surface of the paper. And I'll clean up all my pencil lines because there's little faint ghost pencil lines in here. I don't want those showing up in the scan. I want it to be a clean scan. All right, then I'll scan it in and we'll invert this night sky. And then once it has enough stars and then we'll see how it really looks because this is gonna look strikingly different with the night sky all black and the stars white. I love that look for spaceships. It really outlines the spaceships. It really makes everything quite, quite stark. And maybe if we've tracked down that episode of Pigs in Space, we can post a link to that and uh, post a link to the Patreon. That's where you can see the finished version of this. And I'll post a little video. Once I, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a little live video as we process it so we can see the moment the night sky turns black and the stars turn white here. See if it works or not. It's going to be a, a moment of truth. 
And uh, oh, we have to do that with the other one that we did on the, the, remember this one that we did last week? Is it here? Remember this one we did last week, the Quasar Blasters one. Got to do the same trick there, invert that night sky for this two page spread. So we'll do a video, we'll do both of them together. Those stars, the stars here, because we're speeding through the sky, the stars here are elongated, right? This is a much more peaceful picture. You're just crawling along the surface of the asteroid, not going anywhere very fast. So the stars are all just gleaming in the black night sky here, or they will be once we scan it in and invert that sky. All right, folks, that's an hour. My goodness, I meant to spend just 20 or 30 minutes, but you get drawn into these things. I hope your spaceships are coming out nicely. I hope you've got some uh, surprising antennas and grabber claws and, uh, uh, excuse me, specimen claws and uh, tickle claws and um, antennas and shields and windows and all sorts of interesting things on there. Maybe, maybe you're even starting to formulate a story. Boy, are these scientists lost? Why are they trying to set up the antenna? Who's out there to communicate with, right? Maybe you're even forming a story about it as you draw. So that's really cool. Love to see it. Head on over to the Patreon if you want to share and we can um, be in touch or just set up a Discord server so we can post our work and comment and video chat that way. And once you become a patron, you'll get the uh, invite to that. And I'll be posting a lot more. We have a lot of cool stuff for the Aviaje project. I just got proofs on that. We've got a lot of book projects coming together this fall. And then the fun stuff like this, the uh, Friday Relax and Draws. We'll be doing it all fall into the winter. It's a good time to be hanging out and drawing with you. All right, I think I'm wrapping it up. I'll finish up those stars later. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Nice to draw with you. Um, thanks for the tips and thanks for the comments and we'll see you soon. Merrick Bennett, Over and Out Comics Workshop, Asteroid number 93. Over and Out.